So I think the thread running through the entire gallery is probably the most striking piece when you first walk in, just because it's, it's hanging, it's connecting to all these different pieces around. Um, and it really is supposed to act like this central vein, bringing blood and life to all these different pieces. I think making it a crocheted chain is also something that almost all of us have someone in our life who is uh, a craftsperson and deals with textiles. Uh, we have to deal with textiles in our everyday life because they're on our bodies, they're on our blankets, anything like that. So I think it's a very good starting point and introduction for all of us to kind of grasp onto something uh, as we walk into this space. I tried to stick with earthy tones and things that reminded us of skin and body. So browns, reds, things like that to kind of bring it back again to that uh, uh, relatable physical aspect of it. So I wanted to start the show off um, again thinking about uh, something relatable, something that we can hold on to, uh, like the physical body, um, and also give an introduction to myself and who I am. So I did my best guess at a self-portrait. I, you know, I can't just sit there and paint my face over and over again. So I had to break it down into uh, different lenses and different views of myself. The embroidery on these was kind of combining the delicacy and kind of aspect of embroidery being a feminine thing. It's something that like a lot of our parents or our, our grandmothers did, but it's a pretty violent act to just like stab into something multiple times over and over again. So the idea of doing that to your body, it being something that is physical and kind of violent, but it's also something that's that's beautiful and delicate in a way. So I liked the idea of it being both. The poem in the very beginning is kind of referencing the fact that when you're younger, you're so aware of your body, um, how it moves through the world, primping and pruning all the you know different parts of yourself. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of realized that it's the least interesting thing about me. Um, I'm so much more than you know just my physical body, even though I'm grateful for my body and it's done amazing things for me and there's scars of the past on me. Um, they're there, they're a part of me, but they're also not my sole purpose and uh, the sole way I want to be characterized. This piece has the title uh, written underneath it and it says that I only have so much love to give, but I will give it till it's gone. The rest I must keep for myself. Um, this entire experience has been uh, a little bit of an isolating thing, um, making work in a studio with, with peers, but you know, I am the only fellow. There's only one Ephraimson fellow a year. And a lot of this work has been with the forethought of thinking of how people are gonna view it and, and doing this as a gift to people and as a reaching out to communicate with people. Um, sometimes to the detriment of me saving love and time for myself and my other endeavors. So this piece was kind of a stepping back moment for me to kind of acknowledge that this space and these things are something that I, I want to give to people and I'm willing to give to people, but at the same time, I need to save some for myself, uh, time, love, energy, all, all those things that we really, we really value. So this piece, it has 55 yellow little doily crochet pieces and at the reception, I will give them away to people. There are only 55 of them, not because 55 is a special number or anything, but just because uh, that's as many as I could make out of one skein of yarn that I had, and I wasn't going to go buy more. I wasn't going to go extend myself more than uh, what I was able to do. Uh, so this piece is about, you know, giving what I am able to. 
I personally am a big nerd when it comes to watching people's process, so uh, I wanted to extend that to other people. I left my palette out so you can see what colors I use, how I mix, but also just I think that we forget whenever we're just looking at art, um, each color had to be mixed, um, each paint had to be laid out in uh, whatever order we like to have them. So I think it's a good reminder of just the work and the artist behind these things. I also laid out some paint scraps and some of my tools because a lot of my work is kind of about process and about the making of it, not just the end result. So you have these cans of waste. You know, painting is kind of a wasteful process as far as we can't use all of our paint. When I make my own canvases, I have to cut off excess fabric and chop extra boards. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes unused while trying to make something that's, that's worthwhile. And I kind of like little reminders of that here and there. So this was the first painting that I actually started to experiment with embroidery. And I find that kind of funny because it's like full force into it. There's so much embroidery and yarn on this piece. And there's like a breaking down of the actual canvas as well. And I think it's funny because as you go through the rest of the work, you see me kind of pulling back, which usually you expect people to push forward into that. But I think I had to go kind of full front into this uh, experiment to realize what I liked about that um, intersection of materials so much. This piece is called Unravel. It definitely is that breaking down of concepts that I really wanted to explore contextually and materials wise. So there's this like exploration into the internal and mental health um, as well as a breaking down of materials. So I was finding that these little hummingbirds were showing up multiple times in my work and so I really wanted to isolate them and bring them down into just uh, their like isolated emotional aspect to them. So in this one, all the different birds kind of represent these different energy levels. So you have this main energy being that guiding force. And then you also have this helping force of this secondary bird. But then you also have the falling bird that we all kind of want to help a little bit paired with these song lyrics about trusting and loving another person and putting your trust into somebody. And that can be a really worthwhile experience, but it can sometimes lead to a not worthwhile experience. I like my work to kind of capture both sides. So this one's called chirosclerosis, which is new Greek. It's kind of this mishmash of Greek words that someone came up to mean this being in a happy moment, but being aware that that happy moment can't really last forever. It's a melancholy feeling of when you're in a space surrounded by celebration or good times, but knowing that it's not always like that or um, that that good time isn't guaranteed. And this, this particular one was made while I was in the midst of trying to celebrate, really trying, but this awareness that like this Ephraimson Fellowship is only a year long. I only get paid to make work uh, for that one year. Um, but I had so many things happen. I turned 23, which I put in the balloons kind of as a small joke to myself. There's this eight slash infinity symbol that's trying to hold on to time a little bit and value it, but not let it slip away. And it feels like it's slipping. The one in the top corner is just kind of that feeling of singularity and being alone. And, you know, I had a bunch of people with me during this awesome year, but there were a lot of points where it was just me in that studio and, uh, that's kind of a, a hard feeling to look at the broader scope and, and step away from things. So this, this piece has that celebratory but sad feeling to it. Um, also helium, helium balloons, uh, we use them for celebrations all the time, but helium is a depleting resource. We are running out of helium, if you don't know, but um, again, just kind of that reminder of fleetingness. Both of these poems also kind of lean into that duality of emotional states. The one with the shift is more of how our childhood experiences kind of traumatize us and we really hold them really deeply. The one with burnout is more of that like childhood wonder and this like sense that of course I breathed underwater. I know I did it one time, I'll do it again. Um, so yeah, taking in that, that duality of emotional states as well with, uh, with the 
text that's next to these. I knew I wanted to paint the sunburnt body just because it's so raw and stinging. Um, and it represents so many things, right? It could have meant that you stayed out too long in the sun because you were having like a really wonderful time or you fell asleep and now have to face the consequences of your own actions. Um, and I wanted to take that raw physical feeling and bring it into an emotional space. So um, this kind of passive and active state of emotional dealing with. The one here with the purple kind of waters and these birds trying to kind of lift her heavy arms takes in that kind of settled feeling. You can still tell she's raw and it hurts, but there's a little bit of a really relaxation to it. And then the one on this side is more active. It's more fighting against these harsh winds. And you can tell that the bird off to the side is in a little bit more of a vulnerable state. Both of them have reminders that these states pass. Heavy weather and clouds will go away eventually. Hummingbirds are small, and if you look at them, they're there, but if you look away, they're gone. And little paper boats, um, they're real and they're physical, and they are there in the time, but the water will eventually make them disintegrate and they will go away. So it's kind of that reminder to myself that these heavy emotional states are just that, they're states and they're not eternal. And but that raw, that, that physical feeling is still there and it's still valid and you can feel it, you're allowed to feel it, um, but it's not forever. I think when constructing a, a show kind of centered around identity, I think that kind of naturally leads into where you came from, uh, your upbringing, your parents, your grandparents, and et cetera, as you go down the line. So with, with these two particular pieces, I really wanted to capture the not so pretty aspects of that. This show kind of deals with, again, that double-sided coin of generational joy, but generational trauma. And this one in particular kind of goes towards that trauma route of being in the unhealthy dynamics of family and the secretive aspects of family, as well as being in situations where everyone knows and no one's talking about it. And I don't think that's just in family settings. I think that's in a broader context of being in a situation where there's an underlying current of something that no one wants to talk about, um, but everyone being aware of it. But also the idea of being put in the center of that and being at a birthday party where everybody knows that somebody's not there, but having to celebrate anyway. I, I wanted to kind of explore uh, that aspect. Continuing on these like deep emotional states, um, I often feel overwhelmed. And this piece kind of deals with that. The feeling of having too many things to choose from, too many options, too many things to do can feel overwhelming, but also having a lack of choice and a lack of options can also feel overwhelming. It was odd to me how those different states of being felt the same, like the end product was still, uh, still that feeling of overwhelming. But again, you have these paper boats, right? They show up again, and that feeling that things will pass, you know, these states of, of extreme being are not forever. Where there once was desert, there were vast oceans, and where there once is ocean, there might soon be desert. Also thinking back on um, what generation upon generation has given you, I wanted to think on women's contributions, which are often forgotten um, or just overlooked or not seen as valuable, where I find value. And both of these pieces deal with that, that connection to women of the past. The one to my right has women that I've known. So it has my mother, my aunt, my grandmother, people specifically that I've been told I look like. And so I wanted to kind of explore this idea of like making a quilt of myself out of other people. And so you see like quilt motifs and crosshatch of these birds, as well as this kind of collage aspect to it. It feels like it's very much been um, sewn together and yeah paying paying homage to these women that i knew and i didn't know um and also having a reference to me and my sister being twins and my mom holding us and that kind of being like the starting point of uh 
um, where, where I come into the picture. The one to my left is one of the few prints. There's one of two in the gallery, but I really love printmaking. And again, it's physical quality, just like I do paint. So I wanted to include some prints in the show. And this one in particular has photocopies of old photographs of, again, women of my family. And there's this like tether to the central figure that feels that emotional connection to these people that I have no knowledge of. You know, I, um, I can listen to as many stories as I want, but I will never truly know these people in that deep, meaningful way that I kind of want to. Um, so this art is just kind of that uh, sublimation of, of that relationship, really trying to, to create it and to feel that. It's over top of an article about coal mining, uh, specifically with mule usage in coal mines. And the way they talk about animals and the way they talk about people was just so similar that it was kind of gross. Um, sometimes history can feel really cold, when in reality, history is a very deep, warm, emotional thing that is human. Um, it's not always good, it's not always bad, but it, it is human and it's nuanced. And I, I wanted kind of this coldness to be overrun by this warmth and this uh, desire for connection, whether it be good or bad. So in this corner, I kind of wanted to deal with um, romantic connection. The poem here kind of talks about being these uh, tethered but separate people um, looking for each other and then eventually finding each other. And um, my grandparents that I wanted to paint have a really wonderful love story. My grandfather knew how long they had been married to the exact hour. And their love and their connection was a, was a really deep and kind of powerful through line through getting to know these people. I never really got to know my grandmother, but the stories that my, my grandpa would tell and that other family members would tell was so touching. But in this particular one, I wanted to kind of comment on that touching part of memory, but also the hard parts of memory. You know, we forget things. There's not always good memories as well that we remember. So the good and the bad of these clouds kind of coming in and moving through, but kind of this central connection in the middle of this uh, recognizable figure in the middle of kind of chaos. And that's kind of what I wanted for this piece as well. These pieces were made separately, but again, that idea of bringing together all these different through lines of thought that I've had that somehow meet at the end of their journey. And this one definitely has that idea of, you wanna scream at these people, just turn around, look at each other already, and you can't, you know, they're kind of stuck in that perpetual state of being this close to each other. Um, and yeah, you, you, you root for these people. You want them to, to turn around eventually. And I think the poem kind of gives you an idea that they will, but um, the piece on its own, you, it's kind of left up to, up, to, up to you to decide. So with the Ephraimson, you have a, a large task uh, or list of tasks that you have to accomplish, but uh, one of the great joys in applying was knowing that I would get the chance to fill an entire gallery with my work. I thought that was really exciting where some people might find it to be a little daunting. And there were definitely points where it was daunting, but this room in particular really inspired me to get to use space and uh, get to bring people in a bit more than you usually would have if you just have one space in a large exhibition full of people. So I wanted to, um, explore the safest space that I've had, which is my family dynamic. Uh, growing up, I had a, a really wonderful experience being in a multi-generational home with my grandfather, my parents, and me and my sister. Um, oftentimes, we were the place where people would, um, you know, kind of find their adoptive families, so to speak. Um, friends would come to us, want to talk to my parents. Um, they would look forward to my grandpa coming into schools on Veterans Day, things like that. So. Our, our, our family was kind of a nice uh, bridge for a lot of other people as well as myself. So I get to let people into that environment and you get to stand kind of in this sixth position or you get to step into the middle of this dynamic. I think sharing that healthy dynamic with people who might not have it otherwise was a really special and meaningful thing to me. But even though I am sharing this really special space with everybody, I definitely had a little bit of restraint, right? This is called family portrait, but you don't see any of these people's faces. Um, kind of that idea of like saving love for myself, letting people in, but not letting them cross a boundary. Um, you know, the identity of these people, even though I know it and I've explained it to a lot of people that come in, um, 
their names aren't written on anything. Uh, all the hands that you see are my hands. It's my relationship with these people. It's not about the people themselves. It's about uh, the, the feeling I get from them and conversations we've had, memories we have together. Um, so it's these reactions to people as opposed to, um, like I said, painting their faces or, or their hands. I think a lot of my work and ultimately what this piece kind of really wraps up is this idea of vulnerability. Um, as nicely as possible, this entire exhibition has been me reading my diary with my pants down in front of a crowd of people. Um, and I think that vulnerability and that like desire for connection is something that like can only happen because of COVID. I think it's always been something that's been on my mind, but this idea of being separated from people for so long um, and this art really wanting to be that like vulnerable connection and these starting of conversations with people, whether it be with me or with others, with families. Um, I, I really think this work is just really trying to grasp at that vulnerable, authentic feeling of wanting connection and uh, wanting to connect the dots with yourself as well as others. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk around this with me. Um, I really wanted to make sure that everybody who couldn't make it out to the show or everybody who was still hesitant with COVID going on could actually see it and try to experience it in a similar way as walking into this gallery. Um, so thank you so much for, for watching this. Thank you to Benji for filming it. And yeah, thank you for connecting to it and telling me your thoughts and maybe starting some conversations.